Studio 2 Youth and Community Arts Centre, based here in the heart of Gaia, is the home of Greater Chantal Community Arts, a local charity first established in December 1999 with the aim of making the arts accessible to the 30,000 plus residents of one of the north of Ireland's most deprived communities. During 2016, Greater Chantal Community Arts took two old empty industrial units and transformed them into Studio 2 one of Ireland's busiest community art centres, hosting over 80 classes each week in music, dance, drama, visual, digital and traditional Irish arts. But earlier in March, this all came to a sudden halt. At the onset of the coronavirus at the beginning of March, uh, and with the suspension of our normal community arts services, uh, our Charities Management Board here took a decision uh, that we would turn Studio 2 Community Arts Centre into a Community Relief Centre uh, and we would hope to try and do whatever we could uh, to help the elderly, vulnerable and isolated people from across our communities to feel safe uh, and nourished in their homes uh, during this frightening pandemic. Having already established a healthy eating project here at Studio 2 Moji, um, we knew we had the expertise and the facilities in place to probably create healthy nourishing meals and that we would hope would keep our elderly and vulnerable and isolated people nourished and getting strength in their immune systems while they stayed at home and hopefully also uh, relieve some of the strain on our National Health Service uh, and our NHS heroes uh, at this very difficult time. Led by Mia, who is our professional chef and nutritionist uh, and supported by an amazing team of volunteers, we set about establishing a, a safe and uh, efficient production line. This was supported by a wonderful team of volunteer delivery drivers uh, that allow us to establish our free meals delivery service. Since we began the service, uh, we envisaged a small number, but on a daily basis that number has increased uh, right up to the point now where we're taking hundreds of calls every day and uh, people requesting support, and that has gone right out across every area of our city and region, uh, helping our older vulnerable people stay safe in their homes but also show them there's people there that really care. To date, with the help and support of so many people, we have managed to deliver over 11,000 meals safely to the doors of those here in need. None of this would have been possible without the help and support of so many wonderful people through donations and through the kind support of different agencies who have funded uh, the work today. Like everyone else, I was aware that lockdown was coming. Um, and I started to think about the elderly people and how they were going to get to the shops if they didn't have family or if they did have family and their family couldn't help them out because they had health problems. So I remember on the 15th of March, it was a Sunday morning, and I put a post on Facebook and I said, look, if you're an elderly person or it's your mum or your neighbour, just give us a ring at Moji and we will deliver out a meal. My business was still operating then. Um, and that was it really, that's how it all started. An hour later, somebody had set up a GoFundMe page and individuals started donating. And the phone started ringing and people started se sending messages. Um, and we realized within 24 hours that it, this was gonna be much bigger than just a few dinners a day. Anyway, the people donated and they have kept on donating and raising money without it. It, this wouldn't have been possible. So really the people of Derry help the people of Derry. Um, and I just want to say a big thank you because I have found it a life-changing experience. The other group of people that I want to say thank you to are the volunteers. There are three girls that come in every day and um, they dance and they sing and they never complain. Um, the drivers that come in every day and they never complain, and I'm sure at this stage they must be weary now. I want to say a big thank you to them all. Um, it really was a great team effort, and it's something I'll never forget. We have had wonderful support from the local community, and the people of Derry have come along and donated wonderfully. But yeah, uh, to sustain a service like this, it took funding, uh, and I suppose that's been my role in terms of in the applications and get them there. I just want to say so much deep thanks to every funder who has supported us, to the Public Health Agency, the Community Foundation for Northern Ireland, the Halifax Foundation for Northern Ireland, and to our local Dairy City and Demand District Council, 
and to the Charities Aid Foundation, all of whom who contributed to help us to be able to produce the meals and get them delivered safely out to the people uh, in their homes who need them. And I think without that continuing support, uh, it's so vital uh, in order for us to be able to do our piece and to do our part uh, to help people at this critical time. Well, I think it's important we can sustain the service because the need is there. We've identified thousands of people from right across our city, elderly vulnerable people who are going to be frightened and vulnerable for many years to come in terms of their homes. And I think we don't know how long this is going to last, uh, but we know the effects is going to last beyond uh, when lockdown is lifted. So we have written uh, directly to the Minister for Health, Robin Swan, and I wrote directly to the Minister for the Department of Communities, Deirdre Hargy, and asked both if they'll consider supporting the services that we're delivering. It is so important at this time, so any help that we can get from these government departments to mainstream the service because the need isn't going away. So we need to have them on board and we can't keep expecting to rely on the kindness and the generosity as wonderful as it has been of local people because there's a lot of strain uh, on people's finances at this time. So I hope that these government departments, especially I suppose the Department of Communities, will come on board and help us to keep this vital service going. The volunteers who really have been the shining light and even in a time of crisis such as this you know you actually see the very very best in people and I think we have been uh, blessed to actually see how kind the people of our city are. People from every section of our community have lent their support. So from the volunteers who are doing the cooking, to volunteers doing the deliveries, the people who have given donations, uh, the goodwill has been there and people in this city just want to come together and help those who are in need and one thing i would say you know i thank and appreciate all our funders who have worked with us and sometimes there's the hidden faces here who i would love to speak right out to the public on behalf of because those elderly and vulnerable people who are delivery drivers and myself and connor who speak to them on the phone get the opportunity to talk to are so so grateful I mean, their words of thanks and appreciation are unbelievable. And these are proud people, proud people who are going through a difficult time. And we know how difficult it is for those to actually ask for help and how grateful they are. And whilst you will never see as part of this confidential and discreet service that we have decided to deliver, uh, you'll never see their faces. But I can tell you, uh, their prayers, their thanks, their appreciation are there. And I just want to extend that to everyone who supported this service. Thank you.